The Absolute Way of Living Chapter 3 The Mole Mole sat under a bushel thinking hard. Where will my next meal come from? You could hear her speak to herself. Times were getting harder for the mole. She was all alone with poor eyes but she preferred the peace and comfort associated with being alone. Gone were the good old days of juicy insects and careless worms, now she had to go harder and deeper for a morsel from whatever she could find. Why don't you like company the bat asked, to a very surprised and confused mole. Would you be my companion, the mole asked in a silly manner. You know better than I do the advantages of being alone. We have been comrades in the hunts of the nights and we have hunted at our own pace with less interruption from others and even ourselves. Why then this question? Bat hung there feeling silly. I was asked to observe not interrogate, now how do I answer? As the bat scolded herself, thinking of her next words, Mole continued her speech. Before all these, I was a great believer in company, said the Mole. And from my great attention to the stories of Owl as well as my quick legs and my keen eyes, I was the best among my peers. Owl had many a tale to tell, she continued. Tales of laughter and sorrow, tales of abundance and famine, tales of heroes and cowards, some of which were clear indicators to the dangers of company. But as young and carefree as I was, I wouldn't understand. Would I blame myself? Many of his tales were geared towards the feats of togetherness and the sorrows of loneliness, a fallacy so indoctrinated in my mind until the day I lost my precious sight. You see, we were a class of ten, together in sport and in hunts. Together we rarely missed our target. We had much to eat and little to leave behind. We were invincible but clearly not prepared for reality. The reality of competition and its dreaded sister, envy. To please our parents and teachers, we pushed ourselves to be better than our colleagues, which for me came effortlessly. Don't ever be fooled by anyone who says there's good envy, my dearest sister, Mole continued her sermon. Envy breeds jealousy which in turn breeds strife and hatred and at that, anything is possible. If I had known, I would have been a sister but at a distance, a friend, but at a distance, a niece, but at a distance, a colleague, but at a distance. I would have had my eyes and be better at what I do. Now here I am with two bad eyes and a hungry stomach. How did you lose your eyes? The bat asked. I thought you would never ask, the mole chuckled. I was served the larva of a monarch butterfly as a gesture of goodwill from my good friend Weasel. Never would I believe it an attempt on my life by my own brothers and friend, the conspirators. I didn't die but I became severely short-sighted. Now, I have four kids and five distant relatives, none of whom I will ever trust. This is why I said, company is danger. When my children are a little grown, I will kick them out with these words, you are better off on your own than with any company. This is a lesson not taught anywhere, but given free of charge. The words of the mole sunk deep in the heart of the bat. She couldn't help but feel sorry for the mole. For who could blame her, who could point out the flaw in her sentiment? For the success of her group, she pushed herself hard, only to be pierced in the side with the cold blade of jealousy and betrayal. After a time, Bat thanked the mole and went her way. Maybe she had gotten her answer. But what would she tell Tortoise? She was asked to observe, not interrogate. Learning is least achieved in haste she said to herself. Let me observe her ways a while and come out with my verdict. With this, her watch had begun. Mole was very discreet in her hunts. She had the perfect camouflage and was very difficult to detect at night, but the bat kept her pace. She had been stalking the mole for a week now. Further down the slopes of the savanna they would go, but at last, in the coop of the farmer's chicken, Mole found herself. There was plenty to eat and she was grateful for her toil. Every night she would come and every dawn she would go. For she was always alone, minding her business so she didn't know. The farm was a no-go area for animals. Many knew this because of their many acquaintances. Many animals had lost their lives to the gun of the farmer. If only it was known, they would have advised the mole not to go down there. 
But now it was too late. For Bat hung helplessly as the mole suffered so many blows from the sticks the hunter threw. She was no chicken or egg eater but how could she explain? It was for the earthworm she came but now, here she lay dead. What a terrible way to die, alone and in the cold of the night. If she were in a company, maybe she wouldn't have met that end. She would have been abreast with the happenings of the forest thus, would not have wandered that far. But could we blame the bat, for she could have prompted the mole, but she too knew nothing of the farmer and his gun. She spent her night going about the business of the tortoise and her days resting from her toils. Now she had learned a lesson. A lesson so terribly learned. For many people might ignore this but it is rightly said. When you live alone, you will die alone.